what's going on guys it's your boy christian welcome to face this back to another video so in today's video we're going to be talking about the shimbal m5 5 inch monitor you get this wonderful hard shell case that the m5 actually comes into some monitors don't come with cases so that's actually a plus first things first we're seeing with is the m5 um it feels like it has a cage on it but it doesn't have a cage on it and it's pretty lightweight because of that aluminum chassis extruded all into Piece. Let's go around the body and actually look at this real quick before we get into the accessories that we have. So we have an SD card slot for LUTs. You have a quarter 20 thread on the side which actually have the locking pin dimples on the side. You have a headphone jack on there and that's of course going to be good for referencing to your audio and everything like that. On the bottom you have a covered USB-C port. Now this is going to be good for firmware updates and stuff like that. It's not necessarily going to be used for power unfortunately. We have the main quarter 20 at the bottom which also have locking pins in it and then we have a plethora of vents at the bottom and of course you got HDMI out and that is basically going to be used for your HDMI pass-through. And of course it is five inches and on the top side we have the four main buttons. You're gonna have the on off button. And you're gonna have three F1 through F3 buttons on the top next to those. You're gonna be able to map those to basically whatever you want to in the monitor to be able to quickly get to any function that you might need when working with the Shimbal M5. Mount on the back is NPF batteries. So if you have, I believe a eight thousand milliamp NPF battery but it's going to be able to be on and have a runtime of six plus hours so like anything bigger than that of course is going to give you way more hours of runtime it actually comes with its own quick lock and pin mechanism and it only allows it to actually you know tilt forward and backwards it doesn't allow it to actually swivel and like I said, it just allows you to basically just tilt the monitor here. Also, what comes in this top section of the case is going to be an HDMI to mini HDMI. It, HDMI to HDMI full size in there as well. So if you basically didn't have, you know, these cables to start, you basically good to go when you get this monitor you're going to be able to get an HDMI and HDMI to mini HDMI. USB-C cable that comes included a cleaning cloth. Um, I actually don't really use cleaning cloths that come out of stuff. I used to just use a little microfiber that I have here in the house and you know they get it just as clean you know in here and that basically tells you about everything that how to work the monitor and everything what's in it we will be going over that in a few seconds um, you get a screen protector which I've already put on mine um, a lot of people have had issues with putting theirs on and it is really a tight fit it's like probably laser cut to the bezel on this thing because it fits perfectly I had to relift mine a couple times and get it on first We got the A72 hooked directly into the Shimbal M5. So basically what we're going to be looking at is all of these buttons on here, basically what they do and basically some of the features like the three buttons here across the top of the monitor. So let's go ahead and go over this first menu. Basically what we got going on here is the scope menu and this basically has your waveform RGB portal histogram and vector scope in there and then the opacity is basically on there and I can adjust the opacity of the waveform 
You also can have RGB portal over there as well and do the same thing with it. Histogram and vector scope. You can have up to three over here on the screen and you can also adjust the opacity for all three of them. In the second tab, you have the marker menu. And basically what's going on in this menu is you have your safe area. You can change it into different colors if you want it to. Um, you can also change the width of it. Um, you can basically go kind of crazy on how you want the either safe area or you just want to mark up the screen to make sure you're in correct framing. Of course, you got your grid on here. You got this two grid, three grid, and four grid. And of course, we got your anamorphic, which basically has all of your famous anamorphic D squeezes in there. I'm not going to turn that on because I don't have an anamorphic lens in here. Um, next, you have marker, and this is going to be like your side guideline markers here on the monitor. Of course, center marker is the center marker. You can also change the width and color of it as well and turn it on and off. And then you have matte, which is basically kind of like, um, it gives you kind of like a soft edge, but that's going to be it for the marker menu. Uh, the third menu you got on here is going to be your focus menu. Now in this menu, this is going to be basically showing you your peaking and you can also do some zooming in from here as well. You can change your peaking color and also your peaking sensitivity. Let me go ahead and turn it on. And of course you have zoom in. When you go zoom in, you can actually pinch the zoom in and out on the screen. I feel like that's a good addition to have on a monitor. Um, the fourth little tab down here is going to be your exposure menu. Now in there, you're going to have your zebras, your false color, and your monochrome. Now in that fifth tab, we have the color menu. Now in this menu, this is where you can load in your LUTs with the SD card slot on the side. You can load in your LUTs, see what it looks like with your LUTs on. You can also change your gamma curve in this menu. You can also turn on HDR in this menu if you were shooting in a hybrid gamma log or a log format that you would want to actually expose for to see what the final image is going to look like. In the last tab here we have in the color menu we have color temperature and of course you're going to be able to use what color temperature you want. Usually I shoot with 5000 so I have mine set on user. Now this last tab and it's basically the settings tab um, in here you're going to be able to do your under scan over scan in the settings tab over here to your left. Usually you will start off in the display tab, but I was actually changing my brightness down so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here on the screen. In the display, you also have brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness, and you also have RGB adjustments if you want to go a little crazy with basically how everything is looking here on your monitor screen. Now you can go into settings, and like I said before, you have normal and underscan. Of course, I got my backlight turned all the way down to zero so I can shoot this video. And then you also have a volume knob in there for the headphone jack here on the monitor. And of course, have an SD card format. So if you wanted to just get rid of all of the LUTs you have on your memory card, you can just use that right there and be good to go. You have a function tab over here, and this is where you can basically change the F1, 2, and 3 buttons on the top. Now the last one is going to be your system tab. In here you're going to be able to change your language, see what version you're running, do software updates, factory reset if you think anything is wrong with the monitor, and of course look at the about us. That's the whole features of the monitor, your audio down here towards the bottom, and you also have a lock on here. So that lock is basically going to take everything off the screen and lock the screen so you're not able to touch it anywhere and actually interface with the screen you have to press that lock first now if you wanted to do that and not use the lock you can just click on the screen just like that and click back off and as you can see at the top right right there i have a little micro well magnifying glass that means i can still go ahead and zoom in and pan around the frame even when i have the menu off I should still be able to zoom in and pan around the frame just like that. Of course, you have your flips over there. So just in case you have the monitor flipped upside down, you're actually able to flip the monitor and still see it. Anyways, guys, that's going to actually be it for this 
portion of the video. I believe this was the very end portion of the video. So if you guys have been enjoying it so far, make sure you guys check the links down in the description below. And thank the guys over at Shimble for sending me out this thing for the review. And I will be actually employing this on my studio rig. So if you guys want to pick one up, they come in at around $169, which is a steal for all of the features that you get here in this monitor. Anyways, guys, it's me, your boy Christian. Hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. If you have, hit that like button. And if you just happen to be new here, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next one.